Hello, Earthlings. I'm Adam the Alien. You are watching Adam the Alien. Today is Wednesday, January 18th, 2012, and while my neighborhood may be covered in white, today the internet is black. Yes, in case you haven't noticed, or you're watching this later and you spent today just living under a rock or with no internet at all, a number of sites are today participating in the anti-SOPA and anti-PIPA internet blackout. SOPA and PIPA are currently the two popularized of, honestly, a lot of incoming legislature to regulate the internet. Now, their goal is good. Their goal is to help protect copyright. The problem is that most of the incoming legislature decides to solve the problem by basically preventing people from creating anything ever. Unless, of course, you're a big corporation with lots of money. Back in 1996, back in the wild days of dial-up and AOL actually mattered, I was lucky enough to, at the end of the summer, go to Florida with my family. One of the places we hit was Universal Studios, where I got in a very, very long ride for the new T2 3D ride. Because honestly, who doesn't want a little 3D Terminator, huh? Huh? Well, maybe Sarah Connor, but... That's beside the point. Anyway, I bring this up because while waiting in line, we were treated to a bunch of fake news programs and infomercials and stuff that were supposed to be, you know, about the Cyberdyne industries that would eventually, you know, cause the end of the world. The one that stuck with me was a little fake history program of some kind that described how Cyberdyne Industries had really launched when they had taken control of and tamed the internet, basically. At the time, I laughed. I think I outright said to my dad, How would it even be possible to do that? And, and it defeats the purpose. The whole point of the internet is this wild, free-range mess that the internet is. I mean, it's indescribable. I have to use the word mess, which is the word, to describe it because it, it just it is what it is. It's wild and it's free and the information is just out there to find. Unfortunately, more and more legislators and corporations alike are trying to make this a reality. Now, I already said, you know, I'm all for the protection of copyright. I'm all for especially intellectual property. It's very hard to protect, and you have to go to a lot of crazy lengths to be like, hey, that's mine, don't steal it. But an unfortunate byproduct of the post-9-11 mindset is that we should give up freedom for security. And honestly, I feel... As someone who has copyrights, who wants them protected, I feel that copyright law has grown out of control. Let's go back to those wild days of the internet I was talking about. Most of the web pages out there early on were basically based off copyright violations. But they weren't out there flouting copyright law, they were fan pages. Most of the copyright violation on the internet now is still, from what I can see, fan-based. On YouTube, probably the most frequent copyright violations are things like people lip-syncing to their favorite song, or making some kind of montage fan video of their favorite show. Is this really what we need to punish? I myself got in trouble a number of years back for making a montage of my favorite movies. This was something I made in high school that I decided to publish just to go, hey look, this is something I did. I wasn't making any money off of it. At the time I uploaded it, there wasn't a way to make money off of it. I claimed no copyright and even did the old fan page thing of saying, hey, this is copyright such and such and such and such, this is not my material, I'm uploading it just as a, you know, a sample of what I can do, what, what editing prowess I learned in high school. The copyright strike that resulted from that video, which hasn't existed in years, plagued me. It's something that was only recently, finally, dealt with. But until then, that was a weight on my shoulder and a hindrance to my YouTube life for years. YouTuber Dan Brown recently pointed out that he wouldn't have learned how to edit if he hadn't been just editing mashed up copyrighted material early on with friends. And yes, sharing it online on a forum. For me, that's pretty true too. I taught myself to edit after seeing some Final Fantasy music videos that my cousins found. I took my cue from that and made music videos based on shows. I made fake trailers out of existing footage. The purpose of copyright law is to allow people to create things and benefit from it. And also to encourage creation. That's very important to remember that copyright law is there to encourage creation. That's also the reason that copyright has to expire, because derivative works can be absolutely amazing 
things. A lot of the popular stuff out there is based on derivative works. And a lot of the popular people got their start in very much the same way that people like I and Dan Brown did. Let's look at the media's much beloved Bieber. He got his start doing technically illegal covers on YouTube. My friend Molly, who I don't think anyone can deny is going places in terms of internet fame, got her start doing covers of copyrighted songs. She still does those occasionally. She makes no money off of them, but they're fun! And that kind of thing allows people, musicians, writers, filmmakers, everything, to explore their craft and see how can I adapt something? How can I make this new? There's too much in this topic to talk about in one video. So I want to keep the discussion going. I want to hear what you think about SOPA, PIPA, uh, all, all of the internet legislation, and I want to hear what you think about the ever-increasing length of copyright law. Because I really do believe that it's getting out of control. Which is why I'm working very hard to figure out all the proper Creative Commons licenses to license my own videos under. Because I want people to be able to use it, to adapt it. I want people to be able to create something new out of something I've created. I do want to benefit from it too, I won't lie. This is all I do. I make videos for myself, for clients, it's what I do. But I think we live in a sad state of affairs when things like the speeches of Dr. Martin Luther King can get you sued. Even if all you're doing is making something that's a, a tribute. Something meant to honor someone or something. In any case, I think it's about time to bring this rambly, unscripted video to a close. And please, please do, continue the discussion. The comments below are a wonderful place for that. And while you're doing that, be sure to write all your local politicians about SOPA, PIPA, and whatever other legislation you find that seems to effectively destroy the internet. I know that sounds like an exaggeration, and I wish it were, but I don't think it is. SOPA and PIPA are not the biggest problems. They're not the last time this is going to come up. There's already other legislation going on, so it's up to us to keep an eye out. And with that, Earthlings, I bid you adieu. Fare thee well.